All right, everyone. Welcome to SDA's February webinar. Today, we're, my name is Greg Baker, and today we're going to be talking about optimizing your FEMAP experience. More specifically, customizing your years of tool, toolbars. A quick, quick intro about us. We are SDA, also known as Structural Design and Analysis. Um, we are a small team of, of about a dozen engineers um, working in the aerospace industry. Um, we specialize in composite, lightweight um, materials and structures. Um, we've worked on projects um, in, in ranging from UAVs to manned and unmanned spacecraft and even um, naval structures. We're located in Sterling, Virginia, which is just um, west of Washington, D.C., near Dulles Airport. Like I said, today we are going to be focusing on, on the user toolbars and how you can lay out your FEMAP um, window so that you can access the commands you use most often and speed up your workflow. So I'm going to show how to customize your toolbars as well as assign uh, keyboard shortcuts to those commands and even develop um, custom commands that um, trigger APIs that you've created. So let's get started. Um, as you can see at the top of my window, I have a ton of um, commands stuck on my toolbars. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is how you can lay out these commands that you can access, the ones that you want to use and the ones you use most often. So the very first thing, thing I'm going to show you is how to actually save this command, this um, toolbar, your toolbar layout that you've made. Because anytime you reinstall FEMAP or go to a new computer, anything like that, you're going to want to transfer all the time and effort you've spent and customize your toolbars to get it on your new machine. So if you go File, Preferences, and go to the User Interface tab, you'll see down here there's a section for toolbars. We can save our layout, which is as it means save it. So I've already done this, but I'm going to name it FEMAP Layout Custom. You click Save. You can save this anywhere um, on your computer, and then simply load it later into a new instance of FEMAP that you've um, installed on a different machine. Um, it'll ask you if you want to save all these different options, so your, men to, your uh, menu and toolbars, your panes, your shortcut keys, and user commands, all of the things we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to say reset user interface. And this is going to reset my user interface back to the original setup that you get when you install FEMAP for the first time. So I'm going to say yes. Well, yes. Well, why is it not working for me now? Let's try that again. Reset user interface. Well, usually that work. We'll, we'll move on from that today. But um, I'm going to load in one more layout that I'm going to use the rest of the time just to have some bigger icons so hopefully everybody can see it better. Um, so if you bring your cursor up to the top of the screen and right-click right -click anywhere, you'll see this drop-down menu that will come up that gives you an option to turn on and off a whole bunch of preset toolbars. So let's say I want to turn on um, View Orient, for example. That'll give me this new toolbar. And you're able to grab the toolbars kind of on the left side and drag them around, move them anywhere you want. You can drag them to the center of the screen. You could snap them on the right side of your screen, anywhere you pretty much want them. You can dock your toolbars. Um, so if I right click, though, what I really want to highlight is if you go down to Custom, this brings up a whole new window. Um, this first tab, Label Toolbars, is basically identical to the drop down you menu you saw when you right click. And that'll give you all your different toolbar options that you can um, turn on and off, um, as well as create a new toolbar. Name it anything you want. New toolbar. And that'll create a new toolbar where you can place um, any command you want to. Um, actually, first, before I move on, though, I want to start with a short example. I'm going to. Um, work on this small little model I have here, which is a rib stiffened panel, and just do a short little exercise on it and show you why customizing your window is so important and it can speed up your um, work time. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to check the uh, element normal vectors and material directions and verify that they're aligned the way I want to. Um, what I'm going to I'm going to do this the first time is go not using any commands located on my toolbars, but simply just using the drop-down menus. And we're going to see how long it takes me. 
and then I'm going to do it again a second time using all the commands that I've set up and see how much faster it is. So to start, I'm going to say view um, options, and I'm going to turn on my element directions, normal vectors, OK. And as we can see, the screen property has the normal vectors turned the direction I don't want to. So I'm going to say modify update elements, reverse normal, orient first edge. I'm going to select that property and say reverse normal direction. OK, that's fixed. Now I'm going to go back, view options. I'm going to turn off my normal, dire my normal vectors and turn on material direction. Check that box, say OK. And since I've done this as an example, all my material directions are messed up. So I'm going to realign those. Again, modify, update element, material orientation. I'm going to select all my elements, say OK. And let's just align it in the Y direction. OK? And when you redraw your material directions, it leaves kind of a residue of the old material direction that you had. So to get that to go away, you need to redraw your model. So I'm going to say window redraw or excuse me, window regenerate. And that'll fix the material direction so you just see your new directions. And finally, I'm going to turn the material directions back off. Options, material directions, off. OK, and we're done. So it didn't take too long, but kind of tedious going through all the individual menus like that. Um, let me close down the map real quick and reopen it just so I can reset all the changes I just did. Oh, now that now my reset toolbar is finally back. <laughs> it worked that time. So let me load in the one with the big icons again. So again, file preferences, load layout, um, simple as that, and it loads the layout you saved. So again, if we go up here to the top of the screen, right click, go down to customize, we're able to select you know any of these preset toolbars that Themet has loaded in it, as well as create. Um, a new, new toolbar that you can populate with um, any command you want. Moving on to the second tab is the commands tab. And this is where you can grab each individual command you want. So this is laid out a lot like the um, drop-down menus at the very top of the screen. So say you're um, modifying a lot of elements like we just were. So when you say go to the modify tab, go down and find, um, oh, let's, see, let's just pick a command. How about um, property ID? We want to grab the property ID. And we can drag that command and place it on any toolbar we want. As you can see, that's now located here. Um, another thing you can do that's very cool is while you have this window open, you can right click any um, command up here you want. And it will give you a drop down menu. And it gives you several options. You can say delete that command so you don't you, you load it in a toolbar, but you just have no use for a certain tool on that toolbar and you just want to get rid of it because it's taking up space. You can say delete. Or likewise, you can kind of just drag it and it disappears. So if I right click it, you can say its name is listed here. So we can rename it anything you want. You can copy the button image. I'll come back to that in just a second. And then down here in this next section is the style of the icon. So default style, text only, image and text. So default style will basically take away the name on that icon. Text only will just leave the text. And image and text obviously does both. Um, and finally, the last option down here is begin a group. Clicking that simply adds a little line on your toolbar, and that's just useful for dividing up your toolbar into different sections. So for example, over here on this toolbar, I have um, mesh property icons, so it's setting mesh size on curve and surface. And then I have a break. And then I have the mesh curve and surface and solid buttons. So just a cool little thing to um, help you customize your toolbars a little bit more. Um, and then finally, coming back here to the button image icons is you can ch actually change the image that the command shows. So you can copy that image if you want to copy to it, another command that you've created. You can change the button image to any of these random presets. So if I want my command, say, to be an anchor, I can make it be an anchor if that means something to you. And finally, you can edit your button image. It brings up a little pane that's similar to paint that you can you know, select colors, draw, fill, anything like that. And make it, your command look exactly how you want it. And I'll show you at the end why this can be useful and how we can put all these simple little ideas together to make CMAP really a lot easier to use and customize to your needs. Um, the next um, pane here is the keyboard command. 
again, this is set up very similar to all the other ones where you give it's giving you options on the commands you want to access. So say, for example, you're grouping a lot of elements, and it gets tedious to go group element ID and do that for if you have to add elements to 20 different groups or something like that. That just gets tedious after a while. So we can go back into this window, keyboard, group, and then we go find group element ID. And I've actually already set this, so I'm going to reset it real quick. Is you select that ID and then simply click in this window and the keyboard shortcut I like to use for this command is GE for group element. You're allowed to do up to two letters like that. You can do also do um, you know say something like shift T or something, if that makes sense to you. Anything you want to do, you can add um, keyboard shortcuts here. So once you've done that, like I said, GE is what makes sense to me. You click Assign, and this assigns, it shows you up here what's been assigned to that command. So you can assign actually several different keyboard commands to the same command if you need to. So you can also do you know, Control T again, assign that one. It'll actually say that's already been used, so you don't want to use that specific command. But you can add several different keyboard shortcuts for the same command if you'd want to. Moving to the next tab is user commands. Now this is where things really start to get powerful and useful. User commands allows you to access um, APIs and trigger them with commands. So FEMAP actually comes with a lot of preset APIs and all of which can be accessed in the custom tools drop down menu. Um, so let's just go look at one that I like. For example, view snap to closest orthographic view. And so that'll snap it, your view, straight to a line. So if you're trying to grab all the nodes on a very, the very edge of something or just take a nice square picture, this is a great little command that'll simply take your model and snap it to whichever view you have closest. So if I want to assign that to a user command, I'll come up here, customize again, user commands. Um, and what I need to do is, excuse me, you first name your command, so I'm just going to name it snap. Um, then these next three, um, next three little dialog boxes here, the first one's really the only one you need to worry about. And this is where you put IAM to the directory of where that API is located. So see um, the FEMAP folder, APIs, views, snap closest with the graphic view. Click OK, and now that um, directory is listed here, at, you'll click Add, and now it's added to your list of user commands. These other two, Windows Arguments and Initial Directory, are kind of for more complex uh, APIs. So if you've actually written an API that uses them, you'll, you'll know what to use them for. But just for anything that's already set in the custom tools, you're able to just fill up the first little window here in Program, click Add, and you're set. Now you have a user command. And this user command is now added, you'll see in this list of going back to the commands um, tab, user commands is actually one of the options. And for some reason it's not refreshing for me. I might have to restart VMAP again. Let me do that real quick. Yep, there it is. So in my user commands tab, there's now snaps now listed. So I can take snap, I can drag it up to my toolbar, place it anywhere I want. I can customize it by adding a button. Um, say I want that symbol, for example. Click OK. Now I can simply click that button, and it triggers the API. Um, I can also, again, assign a keyboard shortcut to it. So say I just want to say, every time I press S on my keyboard, it's now going to snap to closest orthographic view. So I'm, you know, working on my model, click S, done, snapped. Very simple, a lot quicker than going up here, remembering which folder it's located, and then triggering it. Um, and then this final option here, um, not too much to highlight here, except this is where I select large icons to make your icons bigger. So how can we use all that? And going back to the example I did at the beginning, put all these ideas together to make the example go a lot quicker. So what I've done actually beforehand is I've created a couple of user commands. Well, I've actually created a couple of short APIs that 
um, look to see if my material direction and normal vector vector is turned on. And if they're not, it'll turn it on. Likewise, if it's on, it'll turn it back off. So a very simple API I've built. This is located up here. I've named it, you know, material angle, for example. I trigger that, it turns on my material angle. I hit that same API, it turns them off. It's a very simple API. It doesn't do a lot. But I've taken that API, now assigned it a user command, and I've taken that user command, actually, and placed it on my toolbar. So these two commands up here, these two custom-made symbols that I've created, actually now trigger those APIs. So I click this button, turns on my material angles, click it again, it turns it off. Likewise, I have one that turns on my normal vectors, turns them back off. So if we go back to our example, using keyboard shortcuts and these user commands I've built, I can go through this example a whole lot faster. So I'll turn on my material, my uh, excuse me, my normal vectors. I'll edit it by property. Say OK. Turn those back off. Now turn on material angle. I'll edit those. Align to the y direction. Update it. Control Z. Turn them off, and we're done. So that was a lot quicker and a lot easier than going through all the drop-down menus, remembering where every little button is. I know where they are on my toolbar. I just click them, go, done. Makes the app a lot easier to use and a lot quicker to use. and makes your life better and everybody happy. So that was a quick little webinar we had today. Um, I'd like to also highlight a couple other resources we have. Um, this is a book one of my co-workers for written named Learning CMAP. It's a great resource for anybody just learning the software uh, and you know wanting to get some good examples and tutorials on how to get started in CMAP. Um, we also at SDA are Siemens PLM channel partners, so we provide um, first line support for CMAP and NX NASTRAN. Um, you can contact us us in a number of ways, either by phone, web, or email. And now I'd like to turn it over to anybody if you have any questions. Thank you. So if anybody has any questions, it would be uh, you type them into the question part on the uh, chat window, and we'll stay live for a minute or two. And if you have questions after the uh, webinar has ended, feel free to email Greg at greg at structures.arrow, and he can answer any questions you might have. All right, so we had a question from Bruce. So any knowledge of when FEMAP 11.2 is coming out? Uh, Bruce, we do. FEMAP 11.2 is scheduled to be released at the end of this month. Um, we haven't heard any updates on if they're going to make that or not. We're hearing uh, DVDs should ship mid-March. Um, and we'll be doing a what's new in FEMAP 11.2 uh, fairly, fairly soon, so you can see what, what has been added in that version. Uh, somebody asked, are we recording? Yes, we're recording this. We will post it on our, our website. Um, normally, it's posted to the uh, GoToWebinar website for a month, and then we post it on our website after that. But you, if you've signed up to the webinar, you can watch it at any time. All right, we'll go ahead and end the webinar now. Like I said, if you have any more questions, go ahead and email us. Uh, you can get Greg at structures.arrow. This is Jim Jean speaking. You can email me directly if you like at jim at structures.arrow, or you can get the whole team just by emailing support at structures.arrow. I uh, hope you guys in, enjoyed the webinar. We'll have another one uh, next month. We're probably doing what's new in 11.2 here sometime in March, maybe early April, sometime fairly soon. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all.